You've accomplished a lot, 13 seasons. You were in the league. You were a star in college. I'm wondering what is the most valuable lesson that you took from all of that? You encounter a lot of people. And the one thing that I learned is that they come into your life for four reasons, to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Choose wisely. When you look down at your phone, somebody texting you, ask that question. Is this person adding value? Is this person subtracting my time or my energy? Is this person multiplying my value? Or is this person here to divide and conquer and gossip? That's your answer right there. And anything that gets in the way of your goals or your dreams, then you shouldn't allow that to be a distraction. And the other thing I learned is to multitask and try to master the morning. And what that does is meaning you got to go to bed the night before. And so if you feel like you're going to roll out of bed 10, 11, and 12, and all of a sudden chase all of your goals, that ain't going to happen unless you just work midnights. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the only way that's going to happen. And never settle. That's one of the things I always did. Like, while I was playing in the league, I was working in the media. I'm not going to act like I was the first. I remember doing Best Damn Sports Show with my brother, John Sally. While I was still in the league, I pitched BET Mad Sports the idea to cover the finals for them when it was the New Jersey Nets and the Lakers. So, like, being passionate about what you do, investing in yourself, because this is what I went to college for. It was my major in college, radio, TV, film. When did you figure out your second act? It sounds like you went into school kind of knowing what you wanted to do. I feel like some people, they go through their career, it, it hits them later. But did you always know that at some point, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing after sports, what I'm doing after basketball, and you knew your second act was going to be media? Here's what I knew. Failure wasn't an option. And I was going to throw so many things at the dartboard that I was going to make sure something stick. And that's got to be the mentality. It can't be like, this is what I want to do for a living. I want to be in the NBA, and then I'm not trying to do other stuff. And so I always took pride in trying to be a great basketball player, but I always was a good student also. I was an honor roll student. I made the dean's list in college. And so doing this multimedia thing, when you grow up poor, you ain't got nothing to do but dream. And it wasn't no internet. It wasn't no social media. You got to think about games to play. Think about foods you're going to make up to eat, like sugar water and mayonnaise sandwiches, and think about your goals. And I remember being a youngster playing Madden, playing NBA Live, playing NBA Jam, having a room full of, room full of homies. Whoever lose, you got to commentate the next game. You can't be falling asleep. You can't be, uh-uh, you got to commentate the next game. And while I wanted to keep the room engaged, that was for me too. And so as I started to gravitate into this space, I was working for multiple networks while I was in the league. BET, um, Best Damn Sports Show, MTV Movie Awards. I worked for NFL Network, uh, Top Rank Boxing, TNT. I was doing studio and sideline. I was the first former athlete with a podcast. That was, I was literally doing NBA tonight for ESPN and doing multiple shows. I saw Bill Simmons starting Grantland. I went and pitched him the idea to do a podcast. And it used to be called The Rose Report. And that was like 2007. <laughs>